Now, we want to catch up with many of you in our new book club. It is our joint effort with the New York Times called Now Read This. We launched it just a few weeks ago, got a great response from many viewers who joined, and we promised at the time that authors would answer some of your questions. Tonight, Jeffrey Brown returns with those and our Author of the Month, and he announces next month's selection. I want to begin with a big thank you to all who joined us for Now Read This and read along and sent in thoughts and questions. Our first book, the novel Sing Unburied Sing, is set near the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It has themes that feel as up to the minute as today's news, but it's also a ghost story. The dead, in several cases, do not stay dead. It recently received the National Book Award, and Jessamyn Ward, congratulations to you for that, and thank you for helping us to get off to such a great start. <laughs> thank you. This was a pleasure to have you as our first uh, as our first book in the new book club. Yeah, I'm really honored and grateful. So thank you. So we asked people to send in questions, and we're going to get right to that for this portion of our talk. And let's go to the first couple of questions. Uh, there were there were a number that were about how your work connects to your life. Let's look at a couple. Okay. I'm Mary Ellen Ziegler from the Chicago area, and I wanted to ask if you based your characters on family or extended family. My name is Jackie Hamblett. I'm from Glen, New Hampshire, and I'd like to ask the author how her experiences with racism affected this story. I don't uh, really base any of my characters uh, on specific people that I know, although my characters are informed by the kind of people, you know, who live in my community. Um, when I say that, I mean I mostly write about, uh, you know, poor people, black people, Southerners, um, and those are the kind of people that make up my community. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the kind of people that I write about. Um, as far as the second part, the second question, I have struggled with, uh, with racism and, and I guess been the object of racist bullying, uh, especially when I was younger. And, and so, I, and I think that my awareness of racism definitely informs uh, mm -hmm. my work and informs, you know, what my characters go through and what they struggle with. Okay, I mentioned that there are ghosts in this uh, story, <laughs> and a number of people wrote to us and sent in questions about the supernatural element. Mm -hmm. Let's look at those. Okay. I'm Terry Margarita from Colgate, Wisconsin. Spirits in fiction can be fantastical as they are in A Christmas Carol, but yours remind me more of the ghosts in 100 Years of Solitude can you tell me what influenced you to give ghosts such an important role in Sing Unburied Sing? Jasmine? So I knew from the very beginning that the characters would travel to Parchman Prison. And I knew nothing about Parchman Prison. So when I began to read about Parchman Prison Farm, I read that in the 1940s that kid, you know, black boys, children, as young as 12, were charged with petty crimes like vagrancy or, 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 or theft uh, or loitering, and they were sent to Parchman Prison Farm, right, where they were basically re-enslaved. And I was so um, shocked by that fact and also horrified that I didn't know about it beforehand. And, um, and, and immediately felt very strongly for these, these children, right, who in some ways had been erased from history. So I thought, well, I really want to write about a 12-year-old kid, you know, uh, I really want to write a character um, who, uh, you know, who endured this, but who is able to interact with Jojo, who is able to have some sort of agency that, that that, you know, person did not have when they were alive. And I figured out that the only way that I could do that was by making, the, making that character, you know, this 12-year-old kid who'd been to Parchment in the 40s, mm -hmm. making that character into a ghost. Come back to life. Exactly. You, you, you tackle some difficult subjects, and we got uh, questions about that. Here's one of them. I'm Kirsten Lawson from Portland, Oregon. Some Facebook readers have said they cannot recommend or enjoy this novel, no matter how beautifully written, because of the painful realities that it delves into. My question for Ms. Ward is, what is your take on a writer's or a reader's accountability to plumb uncomfortable depths in art? And has your take on this changed at all as the world has grown increasingly distracted and divisive? That's a really good question. And I understand that, and I do it too, right? As a reader, sometimes I just want to 
uh, not think. You know, yeah. I want to read something that's purely enjoyable, that's like escapist. Escape, yeah. 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 As an artist, I feel a certain responsibility to write about difficult subject matter. I mean, I, I'm a black person from the South, right? And so I come from a place and from a community um, where often people's lives are, are really hard. I mean, they're, they're, they're living with the, you know, the, the difficult, um, you know, things that I'm, that I'm writing about. You know, they're living with addiction, they're living with grief. So I, I feel a certain responsibility if I'm choosing to write about, you know, the people that I write about, then I have to be honest about um, their lives and about what they are living through. All right. We'll continue with our questions, more questions from readers, but we'll do that so readers and viewers can watch the full conversation online and on our Now Read This Facebook page. We invite you to go there later. Before we go, though, I get to announce our book club choice for February. We're switching gears to nonfiction with a real-life murder mystery and a fascinating but lesser-known period in American history. The book is Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders, and the Birth of the FBI. It's by David Gran. He's a staff writer for The New Yorker, and we'll have readers, guides, and more material on the book and author, and, of course, an interview with David Gran at the end of the month. I hope you will read along with us. And for now, thank you again for joining Now Read This, and thank you, Jess Ward. Thanks very much. <laughs> thank you.